time to talk about some other places beyond Kindle Direct Publishing, because Lord knows we got enough of that information out there. You can throw a rock and you'll probably hit about a dozen different channels talking about Kindle Direct Publishing over on YouTube and any podcast. So why don't we focus a little bit more about what's beyond the... <laughs> beyond the yellow brick road, if you will, beyond the comforts of Kindle Direct Publishing, because there are many great platforms. In fact, today's platform I'm going to discuss here with you, I'm going to make the bold statement of, gosh, it's very comparable, if not better in many regards, to Kindle Direct Publishing. That platform is known as Kobo Writing Life, and I have talked about them a few times, but they've had many improvements over the past year that have just been absolutely stellar. So without any further ado, let's get into why Kobo Writing Life is better than KDP. I know that's a very bold statement. Now, before we do jump into things, I just want to ask you, are you interested in enhancing your knowledge of self-publishing? If you're looking for valuable insights into the industry beyond what my podcast offers, why not explore my video on demand service, The Self-Publishing Hub? By subscribing, you'll unlock over seven courses, dozens of hours of content, and more than 100 videos. Yeah, 100 videos, that's a lot. Get access to The Self-Publishing Hub for just $9.99 per month by subscribing at theselfpublishinghub.com. Again, that's theselfpublishinghub.com. That's the one, the only, theselfpublishinghub.com. You can start it up whenever you want. You can cancel whenever you like. Hey, look, I totally get it. If you want to just be like binge watch for the next month and spend 10 bucks on it, go for it. It's not going to hurt my feelings. I really love it. And if you want to help support the cause too, of course, you can also get a membership there. Let's go into talking about Kobo Writing Life. What is Kobo Writing Life? Well, you're going to hear me refer to it as KWL at some points, or I'll even just call it Kobo for short, but it is Kobo Writing Life. It's a free independent publishing platform for authors and publishers. KWL allows users to create, edit, and upload ebooks and audiobooks to Kobo. They have like a little bit of like what's referred to as a revenue revenue share program because you're distributing it for free through their platform they take a small cut and i'm going to talk about that cut as we kind of go along between the ebooks and audiobooks because there is a little bit of a discrepancy into each one of those areas as long as you know what you're dealing with you'll be able to make a more informed decision going forward now the few years i've covered kwl I've seen massive improvements and relevant expansions to reach more readers than ever. So that's a huge part of why I really love Kobo Writing Life. Now, what does KWL distribute specifically? Ebooks and audiobooks. Dead simple. I even asked, I think, uh, some time ago, I think I spoke with Tara, the uh, director over at K uh, Kobo Writing Life. She had uh, asked, hey, are, are, is there any plans for any print books? And that was a no. Uh, it is solely focused on ebooks and audiobooks and uh, that's very exciting it gives you plenty of options so let's discuss ebooks first now the regions in which we reach our ebooks with kobo writing life include uh three regions in north america 23 regions in europe six regions in asia australia and new zealand south africa and brazil now if you were to compare that to kindle direct publishing They've got 245 individual territories with 13 selectable regions. Now, Kobo continues to expand to meet the demand. And it's really neat to kind of hear they've got another place and they got another place and they got another place. It's coming out slowly but surely. Now, with the royalty structure, this is where you got to pay closest attention here to is it's 70%. You get 70% of each one of these sales and... That's as long as you've met the minimum price requirement. So in the US, it's $2.99. In the UK, it's $1.99. In Canada, it's $2.99. In Australia, it's $2.99. In the European Union, it's $1.99. In New Zealand, it's $2.99. In Hong Kong, it's $15.99. And in Japan, it's $2.99 yen. Now, books price below those ranges you're going to be getting a 45% royalty. So they are very much encouraging of you pricing it above that. Now, let's just do a very brief comparison because if you look over at KDP, they have a very strict policy on pricing. They want you to price between $2.99 and $9.99 if you want to get the 70% on KDP. Anything outside of that range, it's 35%. Not with Kobo Writing Life. As soon as you hit that threshold, that minimum threshold of pricing, it's 70%, period. 
So they're not going to penalize you if you want to put out, let's say, an omnibus of some sort or a collection, if you will. And it's going to cost a pretty penny. If I were to put together, let's say, a five-part omnibus of some sort, it, there's no way I'm going to be able to price that at $9.99 and be able to get my value. Then Kobo Writing Life understands that sometimes you got a price beyond $9.99 and you shouldn't be punished for something like that. Just a quick aside to you can publish public domain books, but it's only a 20% royalty. Now, you can compare that to KDP. KDP gives you 35% for public domain books, and they also have a very strict vetting system. So just be forewarned on that one. So yeah, you lose a little bit of the royalty if you're doing public domain books, but I know a small fraction of my audience actually publishes public domain books, so it's probably not a very big deal. Let me uh, dive into something called Kobo Plus. Now, Kobo Plus, I want you to kind of think of it kind of like the equivalent of KDP Select slash Kindle Unlimited. It is a non-exclusive agreement. Yeah, when you do KDP Select, it's an exclusive agreement for 90 days at a time. And if you want out, you have to fulfill the rest of those 90 days. And yeah, with Kobo Plus, they don't expect you to be exclusive. And that part, I think that Amazon KDP needs to take note because they get it. They understand that sometimes getting us locked in to an exclusive deal really doesn't do us much good. Now, Kobo Plus is a subscription service that gives readers access to unlimited ebooks and audiobooks. Subscribers can read Kobo Plus ebooks or audiobooks on Kobo readers or through the Kobo app. Uh, so, in a customer facing side of things, you're looking at Kobo Plus Read is $7.99 per month, and they've got roughly over 1.5 million ebooks. And on Kobo Plus Listen, which of course is for audiobooks, is $7.99 as well, and that's for over 150,000 audiobooks. Now, you can actually bring the two of those together. This is literally like taking Kindle Unlimited and merging it with Audible. Kobo Plus Read and Listen is $9.99 per month. Now, we're making these comparisons for good reason, because I want you to kind of think about this here. Compared to Kindle Unlimited, that's $11.99 per month. And yes, there's way more titles over there, over 4 million titles. And they have, in, and I'm going to have to quote, do quotations on this one, thousands of audiobooks. Thousands. There's no exact number because most instances it's very limited. And if you want to get your audiobooks, you have to go to Audible or use something like WhisperSync or something like that. Now, uh, Kobo Plus is available in Australia, Belgium, Canada, Denmark, Finland, France, Italy, Netherlands, New Zealand, Norway, Portugal, Sweden, United Kingdom, and the United States of America. Now, compare that to KDP Select. That's only U.S., Canada, Mexico, U.K., Brazil, Japan, India, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, and Australia. This means that Kobo Plus has eight unique regions that KDP doesn't have, and KDP Select has six unique regions that Kobo Plus doesn't have. And I'm sure there's going to be some of you on here that are really big fans of KDP Select, and it's treated you very, very well, and that's totally fine. If it's treated you well, stay there. That's fantastic. But if you find that there's a particular ebook or publication that is not faring well on KDP Select, it's probably time for you to consider going into other regions and publishing wide and Kobo Plus could probably be that answer there for you. So again, not trying to convince you out of KDP Select. If it is treating you well, stay there. If it's not treating you well, consider Kobo Plus. All right, let's discuss the royalty for that. Okay, so Kobo Plus gives a 60% royalty. Now, this is based on the amount of time that subscribers spent reading your titles in a given month. Yeah, it's time, not pages read or any of that kind of shenanigans. They report minutes read in measures of 300 minutes. In their words, each month we take the total monthly revenue earned from Kobo Plus subscriptions. We also take the total minutes that all subscribers spent reading that month, also known as minutes read. We divide the monthly revenue by the minutes read, which allows us to assign a monetary value to each minute of reading. Let's call it value per minute consumed. This value will fluctuate month to month based on subscriber number and total reading time. So it's very much similar to the KDP Select program in Kindle Unlimited that there is a big pool that people are pulling from. But rather than doing pages read, it's through time consumed. So that's pretty cool. 
I like that. Now, distribution also, it doesn't stop at just Kobo and those regions, and it doesn't stop at Kobo Plus. It even goes further into overdrive. Now, this is a selection, either you can take advantage of it or you can deselect it. It doesn't matter, honestly, but here's where you're gonna wanna pay attention. Overdrive offers the largest digital content catalog in the world to more than 92 thousand libraries and schools in 115 countries amazon kdp doesn't offer that you will not get that and when you sign an exclusivity agreement with kdp select you can't get into libraries forget it maybe you can get your print book maybe you can get your audiobook but you will not be able to get that ebook so long as you're in the kdp select program global plus remember non-exclusive so now you're able to get into the libraries now i am a big library nerd i check out a lot of books there i support my local library i go to a lot of events there so it means the world to me to have my publication there now if you are not very bullish on getting your books into library into libraries that's totally fine I totally get it. I understand that's not for everybody, but it might be something worth considering. Now, Overdrive has a reader facing app called Libby. Now, Libby is fantastic. I've checked out a number of ebooks, comic books, audiobooks through Libby. Love them. Absolutely cool. When you have a local library that actually is part of Overdrive's program, you can take your library card, you associate it to your Libby app, and then you can go ahead and check out the books as you would like to. The really cool thing is they will have some books that are available exclusive, exclusively through the Libby app, and other times they actually will redirect you over to Amazon to download it into the Kindle reading app. That part is really nice. Now, with what you get paid, the royalty for Overdrive is 50% of the US dollar library price. So whatever you have set for that, it's gonna be 50%. Now, eBooks get special library pricing. Now, Kobo recommends setting your eBook a few dollars higher than your normal retail price. Reason being is, well, if a library purchases your book at the regular retail price, in theory, the thought is, okay, this is gonna be checked out by numerous people, so that means that's less readers or potential buyers of your books. Um, to me, I think that there's a completely different market when it comes to working with those that are inside the libraries. I have found that in a lot of instances, I'll check something out of the library, and if it was great, fantastic. I'll go and actually buy the book to keep inside my virtual shelf. Now, if it's not any good, well, I'm not out any money and I've helped support the local library. So just keep in mind that you're going to want to do, again, I'm going to do a quotation marks here because this is what Kobo Writing Life said, a few dollars higher. I've seen platforms like Findaway Voices, an audiobook distribution platform, that when they talk about hitting libraries that you consider per, uh, doing the purchase price anywhere from two to three times higher than you're normally used to. Now, if you go to Overdrive through any other platform but Kobo Writing Life, there is going to be an aggregator fee. Yeah, there's going to be an aggregator fee if you want to hit Overdrive through platforms, let's say, for instance, like Draft to Digital. Love you guys to death. There's no hate intended on this or any kind of malice, but they take a percentage of your earnings. Not with Kobo Writing Life. There is no aggregator fee at all for Overdrive. Now, Overdrive, just so you know, if you happen to have any perma-free books, forget it. They're not going to stock it. Overdrive doesn't accept titles less than 99 cents. So anything 99 cents and more, you can be able to put it on over into Overdrive. Highly, highly recommend it. If you want to hit Overdrive, go right to the source. Kobo Writing Life is fantastic. Let's transition over to audiobooks. Uh, this is a great conversation to have because it's really, really blowing up big. Now, as far as audiobook distribution, uh, Kobo Writing Life hits Indigo, which is in Canada. Uh, Bol, or B-O-L, which is over in Netherlands, and Booktopia in Australia, as well as, of course, the Kobo Plus program, which I already kind of discussed all the reach as far as that goes. Now, as far as royalty goes, it's a little different. It's a little less, but it's pretty much comparable to most audiobook distribution percentages. So we're looking at a 45% royalty for any audiobooks price $2.99 or more. Uh, if you're going below that, so anything is $2.99 or less, it's 35%. So you take a bit, uh, about a 10% cut. I would say that you're going to want to probably try pricing $2.99 or greater. Now, for subscription purchases that are made, it's going to be a 32% royalty. 
Uh, I kind of explained Kobo Plus earlier, so you kind of got that. Now, this is the one I think a lot of people need to pay closest attention to because I get this question quite a bit lately. Uh, I know that there's a lot of self-published authors out there and indie authors that are looking into do AI narrated audiobooks, but they're always kind of going, where do I go? Where is it acceptable? Can I do it on KDP? No, you can't. There is a invite only beta program for that right now, and you got to use their software in order to actually take advantage of it. Not with Kobo though. Kobo accepts AI narrated audiobooks so long as you fully disclose that AI was used in that audiobook production. So just that's a really good one. I know that we can probably get into a fist fight because there's going to be a lot of people out there that are like, eh, I don't want to do AI narration. It's just garbage. It's fine. Totally get it. That's not uh, going to be the conversation for today. just want to say that it is available to those of you out there that are using digital narration. So Kobo Writing Life's got you back. Let's go ahead and transition over to payouts and payments because people like to know, when am I going to get paid, Dale? So you get paid 45 days after the end of each monthly period. You can do it through electronic funds transfer, or as we like to say in the business, EFTs, AKA direct deposit into your bank account. The minimum threshold is $50 or more. Other fun facts about Kobo Writing Life. I like sharing some of this. They're owned by Rakuten Group, uh, which Rakuten is closely associated with uh, places like Walmart. And I believe even Rakuten owns Lyft, which is the ride sharing program. Um, they're also based in Canada and also former guest a couple times he's been on this podcast before Mark Leslie Lefebvre is actually the founder of Kobo Writing Life. He's no longer working with them. He's now uh, serving as a consultant for Drafted Digital these days, but go and check out Mark Leslie Lefebvre's book called Killing It with Kobo. He'd done it a handful of years ago, so there has been some significant updates since he published that book. But I read this probably about two or three months ago, and 99.9% .9 of it is still accurate. And you really, like, it's, it gives you the blueprints to exactly how things work in this platform, including pre-orders. Oh my gosh, doing pre-orders on Kobo Writing Life is next level stuff. Now, I can't recall off the top of my head, you have to go read Killing It with Kobo, but I think like a single pre-order almost registers like it's two sales inside their ranking. What? That's crazy. Again, go read Killing It with Kobo because I might be a little bit off on that quote. Uh, they also run a really good podcast and YouTube channel with a revolving line of hosts and guest experts. I highly recommend subscribing to them. It is so worth it. I love seeing them. They usually will have at least one to two broadcasts per month, sometimes even more than that. Uh, subscribe to their email newsletter. Fantastic. They'll be able to give you all the details about any upcoming uh, sub uh, podcast and recording sessions that they're having live on the air. Hey, just a really quick a shout out here. I got to do my shameless self plug. Get premium access to my video on demand library for only $9.99 when you visit theselfpublishinghub.com. Just remember, it's the one, the only, theselfpublishinghub.com. Here are my final thoughts when it comes to Kobo Writing Live. Is Kobo Writing Live really better than KDP? It, it just depends. It's great for authors struggling with sales on KDP. So if you're finding it really, really tough, trying to get any type of traction on KDP and you've done everything. You've changed your covers, you've done your description, you've done your marketing and promoting, it's still not working for you, then consider using KDP and Kobo Writing Life. That's the beauty of it is you can just deselect KDP Select inside your KDP dashboard and you can go Kobo Writing Life as well. If you want to go to exclusive to Kobo Writing Life, that's all on you, but me personally, I like to kind of go wide. Now, this is also great for authors looking for a viable alternative KDP. I think I kind of repeated myself, but I think it's important to kind of hear that specific aspect because there's a lot of people that really think, oh, KDP, Amazon's got all the traffic. And no, they don't have every single reader across every single region and such. And I think it would just be a complete... A disservice to you if you're finding that you're not getting the value from KDP that you should be and Kobo Writing Life has exactly what you need. And it's also great for authors looking for a direct pipeline to overdrive. I kind of like that fact that you can just upload it there. There's no aggregator fee. You get 50% of the royalty that's coming through there. And there's actually even, I didn't even mention the two types of, you know, how you can purchase the one-time purchase through overdrive as well as the uh, pool-based system that's another discussion for another day. Now, why do I think Kobo Writing Life is better than KDP? 
Well, yes, you reach a larger audience via KDP, but again, you're not getting all of the readers that are out there. You're not reaching libraries. You're not even making your stuff available in one spot. Let's say you've got an ebook and audiobook, and one of your readers has Kobo Plus. It's it's cheaper than than Kindle Unlimited at nine dollars and ninety nine cents. They're saving two bucks per month, and they can have two different iterations of your publication and other titles to take a look at. KWL is always expanding, so make sure you stay tuned to them. And KWL is also a great alternative for folks not seeing a return from KDP. I feel like I'm repeating myself, but it's so important I do that. KWL's user interface is very intuitive, by the way, and easy to navigate. In fact, next to Publish Drive, sorry, I feel Publish Drive's the strongest when it comes to user interface. KWL has my favorite user interface of all the platforms. It's very clean. It's very easy to go through. If you're a newbie to this type of a platform, dead simple. You don't have to worry about seven backend keywords, by the way. There's no need to worry about that type of stuff. They're focused more on getting your publication out there and getting you to sell more books. For more details about Kobo Writing Life, visit KoboWritingLife.com. That's a bit of a spoiler. And also, I actually had interviewed Tara Kremen from over at Kobo Writing Life. Big shout out to Tara. She's the best. Um, I did that not too long ago, and I left a link inside the show notes. Hey, next week, we're going to dive into one of the most popular self-publishing options outside of Kindle Direct Publishing. I think you know what it is. It's Ingram Spark. Find out all the pros and cons about Ingram Spark and how they've improved the platform a lot over the past couple of years. Till later, this has been Self Publishing with Dale, and I'll catch you next week.